Log Talk Radio. Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. Uh, My name is Caroline Chang. I am your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Spirituality and science are both telling us that we are literally all connected, that we are all one. And when mankind awakens to the universal truth of oneness, there will be peace on earth. Today's show topic is Jesus, my autobiography with channel Tina Louise Spaulding. Uh, this will be actually my fourth, our fourth show with Tina. She has channeled um, three books. Uh, the first one was Making Love to God. Second book was Great Minds Speak to You. And the third book, which will be the topic of our show tonight, is Jesus, My Autobiography. Um, Right now, our guest is having uh, technical difficulties connecting to us. She is calling in from Canada, and she's having trouble with her computer server. So right now, we do not have Tina with us, um, I did, um, Tina, if you're listening, I did send you a new link to connect, um, and she may have to reboot her computer, so we we all know what technical difficulties can be like, so, um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about the book. I have read it, um, Jesus, um, My Autobiography, which is a fascinating book to read. It's um, really, in Jesus' own words, he tells us about his life story um, here on earth in that incarnation as, as we know him as Jesus. Um, we're, we're still um, waiting for Tina to um, hopefully get through with her server. Um, there is a gentleman that has called in, and I, I, I'm going to see if I can answer his question. Okay, I'm going to bring him on. Hold on a second. Hi. Um, Alex, is that your name? Hello? Uh, Caller? Felix. Felix. Felix, okay. <laughs> I got the last part. I was thinking Alex. Okay, hi, Felix. How are you? You had a question. Oh, really? um, excuse me? I'm very well, I said. Very, very excited to, to listen to the show. Okay. Did you did you happen to ha- did you have a question for Tina? Um, no, actually, I don't. I don't have a question for her. Um, but I just want to listen to, to the show. I'm very excited to to listen. Oh, okay. So you just want to listen in. Okay, no problem. Um, I'm, we're hoping to have Tina live in a few minutes. Uh, she's just having a few technical difficulties right at the moment. Um, let me, so I'm going to put fact, you on mute. Yes. In, uh, in fact, I do have a question for her. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, I've been practicing meditation uh, for about a year now. And um, I heard something she says uh, that um, I also experienced, which is very strange because nobody else has experienced that, uh, many people that I asked. And he said, while I'm uh, doing a meditation, my body shakes and my hips Mm. move. So um, I'm I'm unable to to be completely um, static. Um, and my, and that's something that I don't control. My my body just moves by itself. Okay. Um, with the with the time being, um, I um, take that uh, movement like a sign that uh, I'm uh, doing something well, something good. Uh, my body is uh, is really going deep in, into the meditation because I feel well. 
At the very wow. beginning, I thought it was. At the very beginning, I thought it was a negative uh, sign. And uh, but with the time, um, Tina, you I, uh, were logged in. I hope I, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, hold on, stay right there, Tina. You were in. Now you're gone. So come back, uh, Tina. You were logged in. I just saw you, and you just disappeared. I just wanted to, to let you know, Alex, we, we had Tina for a minute, so I was going to let Tina answer your question, but go ahead, Alex. Um, Felix, sorry, I keep calling you Alex. Felix, uh, your question is a very good question um, that Tina will be able to uh, address once she gets connected. She was just connected for five seconds so I was hoping that she could address your question right away. But, no, when you when you speak of what you're experiencing, that is very true. Uh, she is back. So, Felix, I'm going to put you on hold, and I will let oh. Tina address that question for you, okay? Okay, hold on a second. Thank you. All right. Tina. Hi. Tina? Okay. Tina, can you hear me? Tina, I see you. Are you there? Tina? Okay, I guess we're still having def- technical difficulties. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to put her on mute and then maybe put her to live and maybe she'll come. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, folks, I am so sorry about the technical difficulties today. Tina, can you hear me? Tina? Uh, we're not, I'm not hearing you. So maybe we should try, you should try to call in again or dial in again because I'm not hearing you. Okay. All right. So well, hopefully she is still trying. Um, uh, but uh, Felix had a great question because it actually reminds me of something I read in the book. When Jesus had his Kundalini awakening, it it was very similar to what Tina experienced. When I heard Tina um, describe her Kundalini awakening, and then I read in the book Jesus' Kundalini awakening after he was baptized by John the Baptist, and they were almost identical experiences. So um, Felix's question sounds like um, very similar to what um, Tina has experienced um, herself, so she can really address that. I am. I really feel so bad about this technical um, difficulty. I'm not exactly sure why um, the server is is giving um, Tina such a problem. We've done several shows with Tina, and this is the first time, <laughs> but uh, such is life. Um, I'm going to bring um, Felix back on to let him finish um, sharing his experience in meditation. Okay. Hi, Felix. Hello. Hi. Yes, I, I really I apologize so much for the technical difficulties. This is, like I say, the first time we've had this issue with Tina connecting. This is actually the fourth show we have done with her. Um, each time that she's in a different location, she travels a lot, and she is calling in from out of state, out of the country. So that's why she's using um, her computer, because she's um, calling in from another country. And if she, it was a international call, a two-hour international call would be very expensive. So that's why she's using her computer to connect. Um, but go ahead, Felix, please um, share with us your experience um, when you meditate. Okay, hold on one sec. Um, but go ahead, Felix, please um, share with us your experience. Okay, I'm hearing feedback. So, yeah, kind of move away from your computer a little bit. Okay, you okay. there? Uh, uh, yes, I'm here. Very okay, well. finish um, sharing. Go ahead. Um, yes, I was saying... Um, uh, everything starts with a um, um, a pain in my chest, um, mm-hmm. especially when I listen to certain kind of music that I enjoyed. Um, I feel a pain 
in my close to my heart. So I went to the mm-hmm. doctor and to do different tests, and nothing, nothing came up. And um, and I noticed the pain was coming when I listened to that music, and so I started making tests myself. Um, listen to the music, the pain comes. Stop the music, the pain goes away. And um, and it's and it's a music that I really enjoy, and not only not not only enjoy, but um, it makes me put in a trance. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of um, I'm going to like a meditation when I while I'm driving. Right. To that music. Fe- Felix, can I? I'm going to put you on hold for a second. I do want you to continue telling us. But I just want to see if we have Tina now. Okay. I'm going to put you on hold for a second. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Tina, hello. are you there? <laughs> Tina. Yes, I am. Yes, hello. Ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, okay. that was a bit of a panic. I've been doing every single thing in this last 11 minutes that one can do with a computer. I have been plugging, unplugging, loading apps. Oh, my God. So I, I, I know. I know the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, we have you. <laughs> okay. Yes, I don't is. know if you've been. I don't know if you've been listening, but um, we have a, a young man, a, a gentleman on the line um, by the name of Felix, and he was okay. describing how when he meditates, he starts to shake. Yeah. And he wanted to uh, address that question with you. So. Okay. Um, Okay. I, I I certainly can do that. Um, I didn't okay. hear what he I didn't hear what he was saying, but um, this was one of the first issues that Ananda addressed when they first began writing um, "Making Love to God," mm-hmm. uh, because um, in our society we're very very shut down energetically, and so we don't have these experiences of spontaneous movement, and we actually don't feel very much energy in our bodies because we are programmed to behave ourselves from a very early age we are really uh, constrained from a very early age and what they told me was that this is your own energy that you're actually feeling kind of rebooting itself when you're connecting with spirit so uh, they say it's uh, uh, it's basically your energy it's our own energy we're just, uh-huh. just so disconnected from it in our society that it feels like it's something else happening to us uh, but it's a natural phenomenon, and when I had my Kundalini awakening, of course, I had <laughs> a month-long roller coaster ride through these uh, huge energy downloads, and my body would move spontaneously all the time uh, for hours at a time. And so um, I would have uh, waves of energy going up my spine that would make my back arch. I would have energy moving my shoulders. Um, I've even had uh, energy moving my hands and doing um, what looks like energy work on my own body with my own hands. So, uh-huh. in my in my experience, it was um, it was the first sign that spirit was present in a very uh, you know very solid form. So um, yeah, it's nothing to be frightened of. But of course, um, in our society, the only time you see spontaneous body movements are in horror movies. Uh-huh. So we're all very <laughs> we're all very uh, afraid of it, and um, I think it's part of that retraining. Uh, and in that part of the book, they were very um, specific and said it's very important to read about these energies and to um, study with people who have a bit more experience. And that's really something that our Western culture doesn't encourage. We you know we're very individualistic and we don't like necessarily hanging out with gurus and that sort of thing Um, but in the east that's of course where people learn how to manage these energies and and of course Ananda and Jesus are are teaching us those things as well through these books but it it's um, if I lay down now and ask them to work on on me my body starts to move spontaneously as well I just have to ask them to do it and it happens so it's a it's a big part of my um, uh, interaction with Ananda and Jesus Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Now we uh, we kind of jumped into the questions just because um, we didn't have you. <laughs> so right. why don't we yeah. we just backtrack a little bit because okay. um, 
just to introduce some of the uh, listeners that may not be familiar with you and your work, could okay. you give us a brief, brief introduction to how you um, started channeling Jesus and how you okay. came to write the book, Jesus, My Autobiography? Uh, okay, actually, well, channel, channel the book. <laughs> I channel the book, yeah. I wrote yes. very small books excerpts and introductions um well i had a what's called a kundalini wake awakening in the uh summer of 2012 and a kundalini awakening is an energetic shift in your body and your consciousness it happens uh, physically and i'll say psychologically uh, and for a month i was as i said earlier infused with huge waves of energy that would Uh, travel up and down my spine and and move my body spontaneously every time I laid down for about a month and I was in a a very um, altered state of consciousness for about three and a half weeks or so and at the end of that three and a half weeks um, I felt as if somebody wanted to say something Um, that kundalini awakening was preceded by about 12 years of studying a course of miracles which is a psychological training program uh, based on unconditional love and forgiveness. And uh, uh, it has a very intense lesson and study practice, which I had been doing for a long time. So that it looked like a spontaneous event, but it, it actually was built upon a lot of um, prayer and meditation. And so I um, went to an automatic writing workshop at the end of that month, um, because I knew what was happening. I was kind of, I was quite well read in terms of spiritual experience and awakening and that sort of thing. So I knew that it was a very, very big event, this this Kundalini experience that I was having. And I went to a automatic writing workshop where I very quickly began to, uh, my hand began to write of its own volition. And uh, my guides and teachers, Ananda, um, introduced themselves through longhand writing on that workshop weekend. And they said that they were going to be writing books through me. And so uh, they wrote the first book, Making Love to God, uh, in the autumn and winter of 2012 into 2013. And then um, a year after I started channeling them, um, I, I initially started writing for them longhand. Then I went to the computer and then about three months into this process, they they began uh, they began to speak through me. So that was in the first year, and uh, a, a, about a year into this process, um, a family friend died, and as a result of that, I channeled somebody else for the first time, and it was this person who had died. And then the next day, uh, Ananda said that they wanted to start another book, and that was the book Great Minds Speak to You. And in that book, I channeled 20 um, dead celebrities, I would say. And um, uh, I started with Albert Einstein and uh, went on through many of the great names that we know, famous people who all had a story to tell in that text. Um, And at about the 15th person, I began to have a feeling, uh, wondering who the 20th person would be, because in this book, I had channeled uh, Michael Jackson and Marilyn Monroe and all the big names that we're curious about. And so I was wondering who the 20th person would be. And I just had this thought in my head, just just don't be Jesus. Uh, just don't be Jesus. <laughs> and um, it made me nervous because of uh, the reaction that name gets. And sure enough, the 20th person in that book was Jesus. And so... Um, that day, I walked through his chapter, and he spoke about Jesus-y type things like forgiving your enemies and uh, praying for uh, the, praying for your enemies and these kinds of things. Um, and I didn't think anything more of it that day, but the next day he showed up again and he said, "I would like you to write my autobiography. Are you willing to do it?" And so. Funnily enough, I had blocked from my mind that A Course in Miracles, this book that I had been studying for so long, is the voice of Jesus. He is the teacher in that book. 
And so I had already been working with him for over a decade and somehow it slipped my mind that that's, like, that's actually what I had been doing. So um, as I seemed to do, I accepted the assignment and uh, I began to channel this book. Uh, so Ananda would introduce him and um, for about <clears throat> two months I channeled 40 uh, individual sessions that lasted about, they were about 40 or 45 minutes long each, and that was the text of the book. And um, But it caused a lot of upset in my mind, as you can imagine. I was It, it brought a lot of fears up in my mind, and um, I questioned, you know, whether this was safe to do, what was going to happen to me, and I, I, um, I had visions of black helicopters and um, being taken out of the game for, for this blasphemy that I was writing. But uh, I kind of processed it and uh, I kept going. But it did, take, it did take me about a year to transcribe that book, even though it came through very, very quickly. Um, and that was because it was a psychological journey that I had to go on to come to terms with the information that was coming through, to accept that it was Jesus' voice, to... Uh, to just uh, grow grow really into this new job assignment that I had been given. It, it took me quite a while, I have to admit. And um, But I got through it and I started to uh, come to peace with it. And, and uh, I think it was the fall of uh, 2014 that I actually came, I say I came out of the closet and I began to tell people what I was doing. Uh -huh. uh, so it was it was very much a, a year and a half long process for me from the beginning of channeling that book to actually really coming out and saying what I was doing. As you can imagine, you know, the mind just makes up all kinds of lovely stories. But I do have a pretty disciplined mind after my Course in Miracles uh, experience. So I knew I knew how to deal with the fearful thoughts that were coming up, and um, I just would work through them. And um, you know, I I would look at the history of our society and I would know that my fears were coming from the prohibitions that the church insisted for centuries that nobody could uh, communicate with Jesus except them and uh, that had never really sat well with me I had never really understood or kind of believed that that was the way it should be so um, I guess I've always been a bit rebellious and uh, I think that's maybe why they picked me to do this work because I've I've not been very good at conforming to the rules of society. So. Well, very very true when you say that. Um, I I personally went to Catholic school for eight years of um, from first grade almost through eighth grade, but um, I from a very young age um, I'm saying like four or five um, I didn't. It didn't sit well with me what mm -hmm. I was being taught, and I know. But see, I was born in the in the early '60s and mm -hmm. raised in the '60s and '70s. And my father said a child is to be seen and not heard. So I was too afraid to open my mouth to say, mm -hmm. you know, this doesn't sit well with me. This just does not sound correct. You know, some of the the teachings just didn't sound correct to my my young yeah. soul at the time you know so yeah. i understand i understand exactly what you're talking about now one of uh, one of the things i did notice in reading the book um when jesus described his kundalini awakening after he was baptized um by john the baptist and it was so similar to your experience because i had heard you describe your experience first and then I read the book, and I'm like, "Wow, you guys had the same. You, know, you guys had the same." Well, I don't think it was. I don't think it was quite the same experience. I think, um, you know, uh, I certainly am not comparing myself to Jesus in any way, shape, or form. But um, the three and a half weeks where I was having that intense energy coursing through my body, I was sort of in a state of ecstasy for that whole time and I was in a very altered state but I didn't have that ability that he said that he had where he was able to see the energetic structure of things that he looked at and people so mm, he okay. um, he was uh, I, I believe that it was a very different experience I think I had aspects perhaps that were similar in terms of uh, energy 
uh, infusions of energy, but I certainly don't have the um, the gift that he was given, which is that the ability to see into things and to really see uh, immediately when he was, uh, because he said in the book, when he looked on something with love, it thrived and he could see the structure of it growing and uh, blossoming. Uh And if he looked on something with hatred, it would die. He could see it dying. Uh Uh, I I certainly don't have that experience, but I think I had maybe aspects of a, um, of an awakening for sure. I mean, I at the end of my Kundalini awakening, I was capable of doing things that I certainly wasn't capable of doing before. So uh, perhaps it's just a matter of degree. I don't know. But you know, right. even in having even in having that discussion, you know, we can feel this um, pressure we have never to compare ourselves to him you know, to to pull back and say, oh, you know, I'm I'm not saying I'm like Jesus. And I and I think that's part of his uh, purpose in this book, uh, because even in the Bible, of course, he says, you, you too can do these things that I do. And uh-huh. that's really what he's saying. He's saying that he had a specific practice, that he pursued it through, he pursued forgiveness and um, meditation and all kinds of uh, prayer and that it had a certain uh, result that we can all achieve. And, of course, this is really the biggest um, – I, I use the word blasphemy just because that's really how the church would word things that you're not, you know, you're not allowed to say. Uh, but that's, okay. really what his, that's really what his message is, is that if you follow a prescribed path, then you will get predictable results. So they're really very much saying that it's a science. It's not – it's not a dispensation from God in that sense. It is raising your frequency systematically and repeatedly over a couple of decades, I'm gathering. Um, and if you do that, then you will have experiences that are very different than the ordinary consciousness that most people have. So I think that's what happened to me. I, I read this book. I took it to heart and studied it very, very deeply. And this amazing thing happened to me. And apparently it can happen to everybody. <laughs> well, in, in my reading the book, I, I do hear Jesus saying that we're the same. That yes. they're, yes. you know, I, I, I kind of since a very young age, I, did, I didn't take to heart what the church was teaching. Um, yes. And I, I kind of intuitively followed my heart. And yes. always have. And so when I read the book, I hear Jesus saying, you're no different than me. We're yes. the same. We're all brothers and sisters in, in God, and we're all, we're all, we all have that same ability that he yes. had. He just, he, in that lifetime, he awoken. He, you know, he, yes. he woke up to his full potential, and he was yes. trying to show us our full potential when we awaken. That's, that's yeah, right. That's, I think that's there kind is of a, how I read it. <laughs> yeah, there is a little difference though between awakening and becoming enlightened, and he's, you know, they're oh. quite clear on that. That um, oh, okay. We have a spiritual. So there's this idea of self-realization, which is that we begin to understand how reality works. So we begin to see that we're all connected. That everything we do, we get reflected back to us. That mm-hmm. how we treat other. That's kind of the self-realization process where you're actually beginning to really understand how the world works. You're still having to uh, cleanse the mind of untrue ideas and beliefs. So you're not completely clear of it, but you are understanding what's actually going on. And, And when you have that understanding, you begin to behave very differently. So as you begin to really comprehend what we are all one means, you uh-huh. um, you begin to step back from fights. You stop arguing so much. You begin to do a lot more internal work, but you still have a lot of conditioning that has to be removed. And that's kind of the process that I'm going through now and have been going through for a long time because of the course, where, uh-huh. where now if I have a fear or a judgment because my mind is quite quiet now, it's not full of it's not full of fears and judgments like it used to be. Uh, it's very very easy for me to see when I'm upset at something. It's very very easy for me to see when I have a resentment or a fear. 
uh, and because of the training that I've gone through, and of, and of course, I'm blessed with daily private consultations with these guys, so I can always ask a question. Um, I begin to uh, apply those forgiveness techniques to whatever's bothering me in my mind and looking at where it's coming from and where I learned it. And that's probably uh-huh. what most of us <laughs> what most of us are dealing with. Um, our fears and our resentments are based on beliefs that we have in our minds that aren't true. And so, right. uh, so these books are all pointing us towards that interior journey that we have to take. So, you know, that's the hardest part for I think for Westerners is that we want, you know, we're, we're we want that silver bullet. We want to, someone to show us how to do it quickly and it's uh, it's kind of a slow process it's it's a it's a minute by minute process of coming to understand your mind and your emotions and your feelings and um you know developing quite a strong discipline uh, which is hard for westerners they're not you know we we really like um, instant gratification kind of yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. true no so, you no, know well go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say now from the book, um, Jesus is my Jesus, my autobiography. What would you say are some of the um, main um, mis teachings? I guess I, I'm mm-hmm. trying to find a better word that most people are thinking about Jesus's life because most people have learned what they yeah. know of Jesus' life from the church. Okay, yeah. and Jesus says clearly that a lot of it has been miscommunicated. So yes. what are some of the main things you would say that one can get from this book that has been miscommunicated by the church? Um, well, I guess, first of all, his conception, he, his parents had sex and he was created in, a norm, in the ordinary way, I guess, is, and he pretty much dives into that in the first chapter. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, he did say his mother was prepared uh, energetically and physically uh, from non physical from non physical uh, to to bring him um, through that gestation through that pregnancy. So she was assisted because of the uh, you know he had a big assignment I guess and he had um, specific physical requirements for his body and um, so he did say that she was she was communicated with and and prepared and helped through that pregnancy. Um, I think the uh, second thing would be that he was very a very rebellious and poorly behaved teenager. He was very he did not like authority and he was he would not conform to um, the the requirements of his society at the time. So uh, in the book, he says he was uh, what you would cons- what we would consider a delinquent, and uh, I, I I like that. I thought that that makes sense because he is he was not conforming throughout his life, so it made sense that he would not conform as a teenager. Um, uh-huh. I think I think we have this idea that he you know was the sort of priestly holy kind of man, but. Uh, he's very clear in this book that he was a rebel and a troublemaker, and he was not um, not behaving uh, the way in, in the very repressed and controlled way that society wanted him to behave in. Um, uh, what else? I guess that he started hanging out with Mary Magdalene uh, as a teen uh, when she was a teenager, and they were lovers before they were married. Um, that was a big one. And that they were friends, and they studied the material together, and that he was actually channeling material. This was another revelation that I was surprised to hear in the book, that he was receiving information from outside of his own consciousness. So he wasn't born wise. He studied and he learned, and he was also receiving big downloads of information from non-physical teachers. And uh, he said that now he's, he, you know, he hangs out with those teachers and guides now in non-physical. They're his, uh, you know, uh-huh. cohorts, I guess. Um, right. The uh, the other thing I think was that that was really big was the fact that um, he had mastered the physical material realm by the time he was crucified. So uh-huh. uh, 
the story of the church, of course, is that he sacrificed his body and that, that this was to pay for our sins. And he said that was it was nothing of the sort. He had already learned how to leave his body, uh, get his consciousness to leave his body, and to and to make an uh, he could appear in two places at once basically, um, mm-hmm. and he said that that's what was happening when his disciples saw him walking on water. That actually at that time he was meditating in a cave, and he mm-hmm. just ma- he just manifested that physical structure for them to see. So he was already um, uh, so by the time the crucifixion came, which was you know, three years or so after his enlightenment that he uh, could leave his body whenever he chose and that he could manufacture a new body whenever he chose. And so that was really what the crucifixion was meant to teach his disciples and those beings that were um, studying with him. The crucifixion from his point of view was to show that the body was meaningless to him. It wasn't a value. He wasn't sacrificing anything. He was teaching them that they could have eternal life once they mastered these principles that they could just make a new body whenever they wanted and that's what he was actually demonstrating when he went to the cross and died okay so, so he, that we're not our body basically you know that that's truth, what he yeah. yes that's mm-hmm. what he was demonstrating but from he said from the outside um, there were very few people who could actually learn that lesson Mary Magdalene was one of them he said two of the disciples were able to really get the lesson that he was teaching. Uh, but for most of them who'd only been studying with him for a few years, they weren't, they weren't uh, evolved enough yet to really understand what he was teaching them. So it was a lesson that was misinterpreted and, you know, per- poorly learned by a lot of people, I guess, who were there. But um, that was the point of the crucifixion as far as he was concerned. And I guess the, uh, the other thing that uh, was a surprise was that he continued to teach for quite a few years after that that event, and um, but he didn't end his ministry, but he didn't carry it on in the same place. Um, he he took his then wife Mary Magdalene and their two children to the south of France, and uh, they became uh, they based themselves there, and he continued on to teach. I guess in various locations. It says in the book that he traveled far and wide. Uh, uh-huh. So he, and then he eventually uh, chose not to be in the physical anymore in that form because he no longer needed to be. So I think it's sort of you know there are quite a few, probably half a dozen different points in the book where we really get to hear a different uh, story. Right. <clears throat> And one of the other um, revelations that the book um, lets us know is he had two children. Mm -hmm. He was married and had two children. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Uh, and um, he apparently, uh, uh, anyway, a very exciting uh, development, of course, in the last couple of weeks. I have channeled Mary Magdalene's version of Mm -hmm. the uh, side of the story. So I have just finished another book, um, and she's telling her side of the story. So for anyone who's in, who's read this book and enjoys it, they will they will really like hearing her side of it. Yes. So that that and do you, it, what is the title? Do you have a title for that yes, new book that's coming out? Yeah, Love and a Map to Unaltered Souls, <laughs> which is quite a mouthful. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So Love and a Map to Unaltered Souls. So what they are referring to in that book is that we, when we come into this place, we have a guidance system that's very, very specifically designed for us, and it and it and it communicates through our feelings. So when we're happy and inspired and interested, we're on the right track, and uh, when we're sad and depressed and not feeling very good, we we we're off track, and uh, they refer to that soul that comes in as an unaltered soul. It's not been conditioned yet by the society that it's uh, coming into. Uh-huh. So it has a very it has a very clear and specific guidance system that tells it exactly what it likes and what it doesn't like. And uh, so in this book, they really redefine love. They go right into the pre-birth process of how a ba- how a baby or how a consciousness manufactures a body to live in, 
how it gets mm -hmm. its parents together and uh, that is what they're referring to the unaltered soul is that consciousness that comes in knowing exactly what it wants to experience but unfortunately we have a lot of processes that begin as soon as we're born in this society as in any society I guess but a lot of very restrictive and um, harsh conditioning practices uh, that really dis that really disconnect us from this guidance system that is a gift. So he's really teaching uh, that this uh, guidance system is a gift from God, if you want to put it that way, or it's given to us as a map. And uh, we we get lost because we stop listening to that map and we start listening to somebody else's map. And that can be, uh, you know, your parents' map or your school's map or society's map of what you should do. And uh, that that's really where a lot of our suffering comes from is that we ignore what we want to do and what we are really passionate about and begin to do as we're told and uh, follow those constraints of society. And that that's really where a lot of us are unhappy. We're not, we're not living our passion. We're not... Uh, following our excitement you know we're not following our bliss you, we hear this phrase all through spiritual teaching and he's really kind of repeating that uh, that principle that you have to be that when you're happy you're on track and I think that's probably one of the biggest principles that this book teaches that the church didn't teach which is that you don't need to suffer and you don't need to sacrifice you need, you're meant to be happy that's how you know you're on the right track. And I think that's just such a massive shift for most people that really a lot of people are indoctrinated into believing that uh, it's holy to suffer, it's holy to sacrifice. And he's really uh, saying that that's not so at all. Right. Uh -huh. Very true. <laughs> true. And like you said, many, many um, spiritual teachers are, are giving us that same message that follow your bliss. You know, yeah. um, follow your passion, and um, when you're happy, that's what your 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 soul is communicating to you. You're on yeah. the right path. Very that's true. Right. Very true. And it's well, not logical. You know <laughs> uh -huh. I think I'm going to let um, Felix come in, and maybe he has okay. a question for Ananda or Jesus. He's still here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring okay. him in. Okay. 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 Hi, Hello. Felix. Hello. Hi. Uh, very good. Oh, actually, I already have uh, nine questions. Right in hand. Yeah. Oh, you, and more, you get, more coming up. You get one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So I have to okay. select one. Can you yes, step away from your computer a little bit? We're getting feedback. I can hear us in the, your computer. Okay. Is that better now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, great, great. Very good. Um, I didn't have the uh, very clear uh, when uh, she answered the question. Uh, oh, by the way, Tina, how are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> it's okay. I'm good, thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, when the the Virgin Mary, the Jesus mother, mm -hmm. does her pregnancy was originated by the sexual intercourse? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so, so there's so that that's a myth about the Virgin Mary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's... sorry to burst that bubble, but that's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> very, no, very good. Fair enough. Um, I have a, a question. What's the what's the Jesus opinion about the Saint Francis of Assisi, uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, uh, the Pope, and um, his own father, the Saint Saint Joseph? I'm sorry, I could not hear your question. That was I couldn't hear what you were saying. Jesus' opinion about Francis of Assisi, the Pope, and what else? Uh, the, the Mother Teresa of uh, Calcutta. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I. Um, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Well, it's multi multi faceted questions like that are a bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll um, I will bring Jesus through and let him answer that. And so uh, you will hear me go quiet for two or three breaths, and um, then he will come in and give you an answer to that question, okay? Very well. Wow. That's very, very good. Thank you.
Okay, I'll be back in a little while, and uh, so I'll 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 bring him through right now. Thank you. Ah, uh, you are uh, asking the difficult questions because uh, these uh, questions are coming from a mind that uh, has been trained by the Roman Catholic Church, even though you may not be uh, Catholic. Uh, these teachings have pervaded the very foundation of your society for a very, very long time. And so uh, it is almost as if all of you are Roman Catholics in that sense. So these histories and these uh, mythologies have been brought through uh, repeatedly and uh, at times uh, violently uh, so that uh, generation after generation of uh, human beings uh, have believed them. So we want, first of all, to tell you that your questions are a little distorted and we are not being disrespectful in this sense. But we want you to know that everything about these beings that you have heard has been tainted by the church's agenda for your evolution or your lack of evolution, we would say. Uh, when I walked on the earth so many years ago, my purpose was to bring every single person, man, woman, and child that I met, met into a place of peace, first of all, calmness, and through that process to connect with them and to connect them to their higher self, to their divine connection to that which you call God, but is really uh, a larger aspect of their own consciousness this idea of the oversoul, that you have a multifaceted, multidimensional consciousness of which you are but a small part. Now, throughout your history, there have been many beings who have connected to that higher self, to that uh, oversoul, let us say, and it feels so big, it feels so magnificent that it does not feel like the ordinary separated human consciousness that most of you are living in. And so those, uh, many of those beings that have connected to that higher self uh, will call it God. They will think that it is the divine. They will think that it is the ultimate. But that is only because of the relative disparity in frequency. They are actually only stepping up one or two levels. They are not connecting with the God in that sense, the divine. All that is, the energy that uh, creates and perpetuates this experience that you are having cannot be experienced directly in that way. It would literally blow your mind. You would not be able to live after that connection. And so there are intermediaries that are assigned. Uh, and uh, I was one of those intermediaries. I was one of those beings that was brought to this planet to help you tune yourselves up, so to speak, into higher frequencies. And these other beings that you have mentioned are various forms and configurations of that idea. However, the structure of the Catholic Church uh, is not always in your best interest. It is not always seeking for you to expand. It is at times seeking for you to remain out of contact with that higher self. Uh, so we do not wish to attack Catholics here or to uh, uh, cause suffering of any kind. That is not our purpose. But we are here to tell the truth. And the truth of the matter is, is that many of the beings that were uh, included in the Catholic Church and that have been uh, brought forth by the Catholic Church as holy people uh, were part and parcel of some of these uh, manipulations. So it is very, very important for you to understand at this stage of your consciousness evolution that you have been lied to quite a bit and you are going to have to reconfigure the structure of your mind to find peace once again within your hearts and uh, within your consciousness. We are bringing through the truth of your history, we are bringing through the truth uh, my uh, incarnation on the earth plane and all of the relationships that I had at that time. But what I want you to do now, what I want you to do, all of you who are listening, 
is to come into this present moment. The conversations that you can have with me are wasted if you keep going into the past. The past is a concept that is very distorted and has been told to you with a particular agenda, as I have mentioned. What you are missing is the present. So any of you that are obsessed by my past incarnation are really missing the point of the teachings that are coming through now. And that is for you to begin your own personal investigation of your own consciousness. I had to write that book, Jesus, My Autobiography, because there are many uh, things that are put to rest in that book. But it is not my purpose here to continually go back into the past. My purpose here is to teach you now where to look for your healing and your peace of mind and ultimately your salvation. Not salvation as represented by the church, but salvation in the form of an elevated frequency so that you may become in contact and you may become the intentional and free uh, creator, self-expressive creator that you were designed to be. There have been millennia upon millennia of lies and restrictions and con convolutions of mind taught to you. And it is very important that you do not stay in the past. It is very important that you come into this present moment and have a conversation about what is now. All of you who are listening, all of you who are studying this material must understand that the only thing that is of importance is how loving you are in this moment, how focused you are on the good and uh, the high frequency feelings in this moment. If you are obsessed with past dogmas and past uh, saints and uh, gurus, uh, that is how I am seen, of course. But the point of this teaching now is to bring your mind firmly into this present moment because that is where everything happens. That is where everything transpires. It is only in this moment that you can learn something new. It is only in this moment that you can love. It is only in this moment that you can forgive. It is in this moment that your consciousness is transformed. So we do not want to be dismissive of your questions, but these are not the focus of our teaching. The focus of our teaching is the frequency that you are holding in your mind at the moment. How are you feeling? Are you happy? Are you inspired? Are you creating? Are you loving? Or are you fearful? Are you judgmental? Are you feeling restricted and limited? Are you suffering from sickness? These are the demonstrations in your current now that let you know how well you are doing. So we want to keep our eyes focused on the prize, which is the transformation of the now. And this is a great joy because for many of you caught in the past or worrying about the future, you are in fact constantly missing this eternal now that is the only place that you have power. This is the only place that you have influence. And so popes are part of the Catholic Church, and as you know from our writings and uh, conversations, that that is not uh, something that we want to continue on this earth plane at this time. A religion has caused more suffering than war, in fact, and uh, that is a sad truth that we must bring to your attention. The teachings that I brought forth so many uh, centuries ago in that particular incarnation have not stopped. There are many, many beings, many, many communications, communicators, uh, and I have continued teaching throughout that time, uh, connecting with many, many beings, some of whom were within the Catholic Church. And why did I connect with them even though they were within a structure that I definitely do not support in its current form? I connected with them because they were prayerful, they were contemplating, and they were quiet. And that is what spirit needs to get uh, connection with you. Uh, so at the end of this uh, perhaps poorly answered question, that is what we want you to focus on. We want you to focus on the attaining peace in your own mind, and that is by being present. The ego consciousness is obsessed with the past and the ego consciousness is obsessed with the future. 
Why? Because if it can get you to think about the past and it can get you to think about the future, you remain powerless because it is only in the present moment that you have any influence. So we would caution you about being obsessed about asking about uh, past uh, actions, past relationships. We understand that you want to know what happened in my life, and that was why we wrote that book. But we also want you now to take those lessons, to take that teaching, and to begin to apply it to your life in this present moment so that you are not wasting your time here. There are endless the lives wasted in obsessing with the past. There are endless lives being wasted worrying about the future, a future that never comes because you are not creating consciously. And that is what this teaching is about. It is about understanding that raising your frequency up into the realm of love enables you to tap into your divine creative source energy and when you do that, then you can create consciously and you are able to bring into effect the things and the experiences and the kind of world that you all want to experience. So we would ask any of you that uh, phone in with other questions to bring questions that are about your present experience, perhaps present worries, perhaps present fears. And we can work with you in dismissing those things in this moment. And in this moment, then, you will be raising your frequency closer to the realms of love, which is where everything happens. That is what you want. Uh, so we will uh, return uh, to answer another question in a few minutes. All right. I have more questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was amazing. Um <laughs> Just to to, to put it, the um, power of now, um, Felix, have you ever read the book, The Power of that Now? Have you ever heard no, of the I book? No, okay, I haven't. Okay, good. Yeah, this is one you might want to check out, The Power of Now, but that was an amazing answer from Jesus. But continue. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Felix. Okay. Okay, uh, my next question: uh, Does the demons, the demons exist? Are they rebel, uh, rebel angels that change their purpose? And sometimes, uh, so that that brings the other, the exorcism, that um, the different priests or different uh, persons does, because a person gets possessed. Uh, are those true? Or is, is this a true thing, or, or was that that phenomenon? Because it's, it's a real phenomenon that happened, but uh, nobody really knows uh, what exactly it is. Okay, I will take a couple of breaths once again, and uh, I'll see. I'll I'll bring Jesus through. Uh, can I can I give you another question? So, so uh, no, I think so I think you one have question to, at a time. To, yes. Oh, yes. one at a time. That's right. Perfect. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe, uh, is there any chance that you can just mute um, Felix's mic just so that we're not uh, interrupted? Sure. Because that's sure. a bit distracting no problem. for me. Okay, thanks. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I'm just going to tune in now, okay? <clears throat> uh-huh. This is uh, one of the great uh, fears that keeps you from spirituality, this idea of possession. And so this is a very, very good question as it relates to your consciousness evolution. Uh, there are many, many levels of consciousness. Uh, we want to tell you that your physical earth plane is one of the lower realms of consciousness, uh, despite what you are told uh, that this is the be-all and end-all of life. It is not. Uh, consciousness, of course, uh, exists before you are born, uh, and it continues on after you die. Uh, so there is eternal life in that sense, and this is, um, an important principle for you to begin to bring to the way you view yourself because a lot of the fears that you have are based on this idea that uh, once you uh, die, that is it. The other thing that, of course, brings up a lot of fear in the minds of many of you is that uh, there is a punishing God that is waiting to um, chastise you for any errors that you have made in your incarnation. These all play into the idea of uh, possession and evil. 
Uh, but we do want you to know that there are realms of consciousness that are lower than the one that you are in. You, in fact, are residing in the lower level of the consciousness that you have access to. And this is uh, you are being drawn down towards the lower realms of your particular realm, uh, the lower levels of your particular realm by some of the conditioned teachings of your society and by some of the systems that are at play in your society. And so this is a very important thing for you to know that many of you that are suffering from depression, sadness, or even suicidal thoughts are lurking down at the lower end of the range that you are capable of accessing in your what you would consider your earthly consciousness. So this is something that the teachings we have brought through uh, for a long time now are asking you to work on. And that is through the practice of forgiveness and uh, loving kindness. As you are kinder and gentler and more loving and forgiving of yourself and others, remember we say yourself and others, not just others. It's a very important principle here. Uh, Many of you, when you hear the word forgiveness, think that you must only apply it to others but you must apply it to yourself first. Many of the actions that you have taken in your lifetime, many of the behaviors that you have exhibited throughout this incarnation are errors based on teachings that were indoctrinated into you by somebody else who was not teaching you the truth. And so your behavior was not really your fault in that sense. And this is one of the great processes that you must go through as you begin to undo the damage that has been inflicted upon you by the conditioning on this plane, on your plane at this time. Uh, But we will return to the idea idea of levels of consciousness. There are levels of consciousness that are below yours and they are darker than yours, lower frequency of that, lower frequencies than yours. And there are many, many realms above yours that are of a higher frequency. So as we have said, many of you are down in the lower levels of this consciousness that is the earth plane, uh, the ordinary human consciousness as you know it. And and you are looking down at those lower levels because of the training that you have had. The fear mongering and the punishments, corporal punishments, the restrictions of sexual energy that have been taking place on your planet for a very long time have pushed you down into those lower realms of ordinary human consciousness. And so there is quite a bit of contact between your earthly realm, we would say, uh, as you understand it to be, and the realms that are immediately below this one because you have been kept down at the bottom of this human level of consciousness. And you have been kept down there through fear-mongering. You have been kept down there through an intense focus on materialism. Uh, You have been kept down there by uh, the uh, uh, pursuit of things like pornography, watching violent movies, uh, these kinds of things, intense levels of judgment and self-loathing. These will keep your frequency down very, very low in this level of consciousness, and it will allow contact with the realms that are beneath this one. So we want you to understand that any negative contacts that are made are based on frequency. It's a good thing for all of you to know that the higher your frequency is, the less contact you will have with that realm beneath this earthly one. And that is why we teach forgiveness and that is why we are emphasizing love as a practice because as you do that, you raise yourself up from that uh, basement level of the human consciousness and you begin to go up into the higher levels, the higher dimensions. And as you continue that practice, you go higher and higher up and you begin to make contact with the levels of consciousness above this one. And that is all this being has done. She has uh, uh, systematically practiced forgiveness. She has systematically relinquished the lower frequency practices that are normal in your society, things like watching violent television that is about murder, judging your brothers and sisters constantly in your mind. These are things that are very, very normal in your society. 
And through the study of that book called A Course in Miracles, she raised her frequency up into the higher realms of ordinary human consciousness. Yes, she is still an ordinary human being. But she has now taken herself up into the upper levels of your ordinary human consciousness. And she is now able to tap into the realms just above the one that you are all living in. So it is very important for you to understand that you are the decider. You are the frequency setting uh, captain of your ship, let us say. Nobody else is doing it to you except through the conditioning process of your society. And uh, here we want to begin to start that dialogue about what these conditioning processes are. Uh, uh, training children to watch television very early is a very uh, inopportune practice. This is not something that uh, we would like you to do. Uh, your children need to experience creativity, they need to experience nature, they need to experience freedom and self-expression, they need to develop their little bodies into strong and uh, uh, powerful experience seekers. That is what your body is. It is a seeker of experience. Remember, you come into this incarnation with a map that is designed specifically for you and it will lead you through physical experience very well if you aren't uh, interfered with and controlled. And, of course, this is where your education system and the constraints of some of your religious and cultural teachings cause a lot of suffering. Telling children to sit when they should be playing, telling children to be quiet when they want to sing and dance and express themselves and give their opinions even. These are some of the frequency lowering disciplines that are employed in your society. And uh, you would be horrified to see what some of these things do to the frequencies of your children. And as you allow your children then to go from what you think are harmless movies and cartoons, uh, often, however, they have a very uh, insidious message that you should fight evil and that evil exists. There is always a play of good and bad in these children's movies, and it is indoctrinating them into the idea of battle. It is indoctrinating them into the idea of supremacy and conflict, and it is not indoctrinating them into the idea of forgiveness and kindness and acceptance, which is going to bring their frequency up into the higher realms. So for those of you that are concerned about possession, that are concerned about this contact with lower realms, let us say, uh, then you need to look at what you allow your children to do because you are setting a frequency as their parent by what you allow in your house. You are setting a frequency not only, of course, by what you allow them to watch on television, but what you watch on television yourself. The frequency of your home is set by that thing in the corner that is the television set. And so this is something that we want you to begin to see, not as a friend, but as a very, very detrimental conditioning device that is uh, intentionally keeping you down into the lower realms of the physical material world. Remember, you are spiritual beings. You are here to expand and grow and learn. And you are connected to love that is where you come from. Yes, you have come into a separated physical experience, but you are connected to love by your guidance system. And that is the messaging system that you must begin to listen to if you want to raise yourself up into the higher realms, the higher frequencies, because you are already there in your guidance system. And this is something that most of you do not think about. Because you feel bad a lot of the time, because you are frightened a lot of the time, or because you are judgmental a lot of the time, you do not feel as if you are hooked into love, let us say. But you are. You are feeling bad because of the judgments. You are feeling bad because you are out of alignment with yourself, and you are not listening to that guidance system that is very, very clearly telling you to do certain things. The guidance system is telling you perhaps to paint or to walk or to eat healthily or to develop love relationships. 
but the other aspects of your trained mind, remember you have been conditioned very, very severely from an early age, the other aspects of your mind generating thoughts is telling you the opposite, to attack, to judge, to separate. And so you have the very mixed emotions because half of the time you are listening to thoughts that generate feelings that have been indoctrinated into your minds from systems outside of love, we would say. So do demons exist? Not in the form that you think, but when you have consistently negative or hateful thoughts in your mind and you act upon them, you are going to lower your frequency. When you have loving and forgiving and kind thoughts in your mind, and you act on them, you are going to raise your frequency. And if you do that year after year, decade after decade, you are going to shift your position in that frequency zone, let us say. So if you are consistently hating yourself, judging yourself, punishing yourself, and doing that to others as well, even if it is only in thought, then you are going to take your frequency down lower. And when you pass over, you will be reincarnated into a frequency that matches the frequency that you held upon your death as you experienced it. And yes, in this society, you experience death as a reality. We want you to know that if you raise your frequency high enough, even in this ordinary human consciousness that you are experiencing, you will cease to experience death the way you do now. And that is, of course, what we are setting as a goal for this next generation. And so for those of you that are parents, it is very, very important for you to monitor the violence and the hatred that your children are exposed to through this conditioning system known as television. And it is very important for you to demonstrate loving kindness to your children too. So you must look at where you are oppressive with them, where you are violent with them in word, thought, or deed. And uh, you must begin to study loving material and transform your own mind so that you are not indoctrinating yet another generation. There have been countless generations on your planet indoctrinated into war, indoctrinated into fear, and this is the time, this is the place to change that, to shift that. But we must have difficult conversations. We must tell you what is being done to you through this device known as television and, unfortunately, your education system. It is part and parcel of the same oppressive regime. And it is important for you to understand this as parents. And it is important for you to understand this as victims of these indoctrination systems. We must speak the truth here because uh, very few people are willing to do that. And uh, it is time now for a love revolution on your plane. We are ma amassing great energies on the side to assist you in that evolution. But you are the decision maker. You are given free will and you are allowed to choose whatever you wish in this experience that you call life. And so we are encouraging you to choose love and we are encouraging you to choose forgiveness so that you no longer dip down into those lower realms because that journey can be as endless as the journey up into the higher realms. So do not think that there is a bottom rung on that ladder. You can go down far into darkness, but it will be done one choice at a time. It will be done one decision at a time. You are never flung into hell for making one wrong choice. It is a consistent and repeated pattern of hatred that is pursued intentionally and uh, in ignorance that takes you down into those lower realms. So we are going to uh, stop the answer to that question there and give uh, this dear being who speaks so eloquently for us uh, a chance to rest her voice for a few minutes. So we will return shortly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Yes, it, it, it's all about frequency. That's so so true. Where you where you hold your fre frequency, um, and and kind of along those same lines, I I was thinking about. Um, I've been hearing a lot of channeled messages that we are um, 
entering into a, a new um, evolution where we're raising our consciousness that the mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> tide has turned. That yes. um, So um, I, I did, I mean, I want to give you a rest there, but I did want to um, ask Jesus um, what that new paradigm is, is going to look like because from all the information I've been hearing is that we are, we've passed the turning point where we are definitely <clears throat> raising our, our consciousness as a collective mm-hmm. and um, heading t- towards a new paradigm here on Earth. Mm-hmm. Thank you for this, talking for a minute, just so I can have a little break of <laughs> Yes. Very well done. Uh, sometimes, yeah, the voice uh, is challenged by these, you know, two-hour shows. But um, I'm, in a, I'm, I'm training, so it, it's okay. Um, okay, I will, um, as I always do, take a couple of breaths, and I will allow him to answer that question. <clears throat> okay, great. The world that you live in uh, right now is a reflection of all of your minds. Uh, You uh, see it as an objective world that is uh, acting upon you. Uh, That means uh, objectivity means that you are not creating it, but you are creating it. And uh, this is one of the fundamental shifts that must uh, be addressed, even in that question, uh, that you are coming into another paradigm It is as if you are traveling there randomly and it is happening to you. This is not the case. This uh, consciousness that you express through your physical actions, through your words and through your deeds and through your thoughts is a collective mind, if you will. This is very upsetting for the ego consciousness, which is very, very focused on separation and individuality. And that is where most of you have been trained to reside in the ego consciousness. Even those of you that are on a spiritual path are still deeply indoctrinated by your society from birth into believing in the body, into believing in separation, into believing in the idea of separate interests. And that is where these teachings that are coming through this being and that I taught so many years ago on the physical Uh, earth plane when I was incarnated there, that is what these teachings are about. These teachings have been brought to earth many times and they have been usurped many times. Uh, The teachings that I brought forth were taken over by the hierarchies of that time and place and they were distorted and they were edited and they were changed and they were made into something else that has been experienced as the last 2,000 years of uh, Uh, these endless cycles of war and pestilence and uh, darkness. Uh, Really, if you look at the history of the last 2,000 years, it has not been a pretty picture. But if you look at it uh, whole, you will see that there is a consciousness evolution taking place in spite of the restrictions and uh, conditioning techniques that were used by some of these hierarchical structures, uh, some of these religions you can see that people are becoming a little more compassionate. Things like hospitals and social welfare programs have been instigated in your society and they have been brought about by the slow and inexorable evolution of consciousness that is taking place. Slavery and used to be a condoned practice, but the hearts and minds of beings that were evolving saw that it was unacceptable and they made things change and this is consciousness evolution in action on the ground women in this country as you experience it now we would say the west north america uh, were not given the vote and these uh, beings that knew that this was an equality that was not acceptable fought for that equality and it has changed over time But what has happened in the last few decades is that there is a manipulation of your consciousness happening. And so your free will is being undermined. And this is the point that is very, very important for you to understand as we discuss the evolution of your planet. And this is why there is such 
such a direct intervention happening now from spirit because each of you have a television in your home. Each of you have cellular phones in your hands that are connected to networks that are distributing information. And it is very important for you to know that these systems are manipulating you intentionally into doing things that are not in your best interest. Now, this is generally not considered spiritual, the subject. This subject would generally be considered conspiracy theory. And this is a very, very important topic for you to address at this stage in this consciousness evolution revolution that is happening. It is important for all of you that want to see this new paradigm take part, take uh, take hold on your planet. It is very important for all of you to begin to unplug yourselves from mass media. Now, we are not speaking about this kind of communication that is happening where you are choosing to tune into a high-frequency broadcast that is guiding you towards light and love and forgiveness. We are speaking about the broadcasts that are... Uh, disseminated through mass media around your planet, uh, programs that are focused on death, focus, programs that are focused on war or judgment or the body. Uh, this is an important thing for you to understand, that the obsession with the body as the device to use to get you what you want is a very, very low frequency teaching and it is being disseminated through these mass media systems. What we want you to know is that you do not have to ignore the body, but you have to focus on the non-physical in that sense. And what is non-physical in your consciousness experience? It is your feeling, emotional self. It is your creativity. It is your imagination. These are non-physical aspects of your consciousness experience on this physical plane. Yes, you are a physical being in this time and place, but you are also an emotional being. That is non-physical. You are a creative being. That is non-physical. You are an expressive and uh, ever-expressive evolving consciousness in a physical form at this time. But this physical form changes as you change the frequency of your thoughts. This physical being changes as you change. Your physical structure does not have any volition in and of itself. When you see a corpse, when the spirit has left a body, the body does nothing in and of itself. The systems that are activated are all activated by mind. They are all activated by mind. And when that mind is in alignment with love, the systems are activated perfectly because the body does what you tell it to do. Now, we have not gone off uh, the answer to that question, but this is a very, very important thing for you to understand as you play your part in bringing in this new paradigm. You have been kept artificially below your natural level of consciousness over the last 50 to say, to 80 years. You have been taught through mass media to fear. You have been taught through mass media to consume material possessions, to acquire material possessions, and you have been taught to judge your neighbors and yourselves through this mass media system. And so over the last 50 to 80 years, you would have evolved to a higher frequency than you have. But what is happening is now those beings that are not tapped into these frequency lowering, lowering devices are having a significant effect on the balance of your planet. So a lot of these beings who have been disconnected from mass media and you would consider them perhaps even less evolved or less civilized than you, they have been going through this natural consciousness evolution that is transpiring and has always transpired on this plane. But it has not been stopped in them. It has not been held back in them. And there are those of you that have voluntarily unplugged from mass media, and there are many of you over the last decade or so that have done that. You too are now rebounding up into the levels of frequency that you are supposed to be in. 
And so this is what is happening now. There is a groundswell of frequency elevation happening, and we are all assisting from the side. So those of you that are raising your frequency and unplugging from television and these sorts of things are beginning to bounce up like a cork, if you will, uh, to the surface of the water, and you are beginning to get communications from spirit. What do communications from spirit look like? They look like inspirations. They look like really good ideas. They look like loving uh, emotions. That is how spirit speaks to you. We speak to you through that amazing creative mind that you have. We speak to you through your heart and your emotional body. So as you step away from violence, as you step away uh, from unhealthy foods towards healthy foods, as you step away from restriction to creativity and self-expression, you are going to get more and more accurate feedback from your guidance system, which is connected to spirit. And so what is happening now is that this momentum, uh, the number of beings that are tuning into spirit, the number of beings that are stepping away from mass media are really beginning to swing the pendulum past that middle point. And the more of you that are listening here today, the more of you that begin to turn off that violence, that begin to focus on eating organic, healthy foods, that begin to shift your thoughts through mind training, are going to add to that momentum. And this is what is going to transpire in the next few years. You have gone past the tipping point. But what we want you to know is that the more of you that join in this love revolution, the more of you that actively discipline your minds towards forgiveness and uh, kindness, the more of you that actively dismantle and remove television sets from your homes, the quicker this shift is going to happen. You are seeing a great struggle on your planet at the moment, and that is the old paradigm and the old hierarchies struggling to hold on to an oppressive, repressive system that has been in place for thousands of years, and it cannot hold on, but it is trying desperately. And that is what you are witnessing in the frac friction and in some of the uh, disasters and the uh, societal breakdowns you are witnessing right now. And even in some of the escalations of war that you are seeing, you are seeing a military industrial complex that is a global system. It is not uh, attributed to one, plan, uh, one country. It is a global system that is trying to hold on to the reins of control of the planet. And it is an impossible task because the frequency has gone past the tipping point. So that is what you are experiencing. And as individuals, you are going to experience an individual spiritual awakening as you relinquish the lower frequency thoughts and ideas and beliefs and as you step into these higher frequencies. Now, this being here, a wonderful clear channel that is a, a joy to work with, has been bringing through information that is part and parcel of this new revolution. And the books that she has brought through are being brought through in a specific order because that is the order that these problems need to be addressed in. So if you are curious about her work, uh, do please read the books in the order in which they were written because they are introducing ideas and concepts and frequencies in a systematic way so that your mind may be changed in a systematic way and it will be less uh, destabilizing. So this is something that is important for you to know as you are reading these books. We do not suggest that you read the later books before the earlier books because your mind will not have been prepared enough for it and you are going to have some emotional upsets or disruptions because of the information that is coming through. But what we want you to know is that there are many beings on your planet who are blissfully ignorant of this process. And as these frequencies shift and as your society changes, which it is in the middle of uh, uh, doing, uh, there are going to be difficult times ahead because there are many beings who are not aware of these uh, frequency shifts because they are hypnotized by the televisions and uh, computers with which they have intimate relationships. And they are going to have a rude awakening. So we want all of you that are listening here 
to very, very gently begin to open up these topics of conversation with your families, not in a proselytizing way, not in a forceful way, but we want you to begin to walk away from those violent shows that you would normally watch. We want you to begin to turn the television off for yourself first, and uh, your uh, family will begin to ask the question, why aren't you watching the news anymore, whether it is a husband or a wife uh, asking you that question. And you will be able to open up the dialogue then when they ask a cur with a curious question. Do not inflict this upon anyone else. Do not force it upon anyone else, but demonstrate through your own loving and kind behavior to yourself, first of all, that you are shifting your frequency. And we want you to begin to see yourself as your project. You are trained in your society to care more for others than you are, to, that, to care more for others than you do for yourself. And this is one of the distortions of church teachings. You must care for your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own food intake, your own exercise, your own creativity and imagination first. This is your life. This is your creation. Other people have their lives and their creations, their own thoughts, and you must remember that they have their own guidance system and map, which is going to take them down a different path than yours is taking you. So even in your families, you must learn to respect those other members of the family and know that they are going to do different things but that your responsibility is to make loving choices. Your responsibility is to forgive yourself for all the errors that you have made in your life because you did not know what you were doing. And it is your responsibility to forgive others their mistakes because those beings that have hurt you did it inadvertently. They were trained in a violent society where judgment was rife and separation was encouraged. And so they may have been selfish or they may have been unkind. And you now, knowing why behavior is poor, can forgive them and allow them their path and refocus your mind on your own creations, on your own self-exploration and your own retraining. This is what is so paramount at this point because the tipping point has been reached. Every single one of you, literally every single one of you that changes your mind and begins to remove these fears from your thoughts and uh, begins to practice these principles that we are bringing forth, every single one of you is adding to the momentum of love on this planet and the revolution is going to succeed. But we want it to succeed quickly. We want it to succeed as painlessly as possible. And the more of you that jump on this love bandwagon, the quicker it is going to transpire. But no matter what happens, there is going to be a great ending on your planet and it is going to be of many of the structures that are not based on love, that are not based on forgiveness and compassion. But you are being assisted by many, many great minds. You are being assisted by levels of consciousness that you are mostly unaware of. And many, many beings are uh, standing by waiting to communicate with you as you get your frequency high enough. But we will not come down into the lower realms. Occasionally, we do rescue someone from suicide or murder, uh, but that is generally not what we do. It is a free will zone in which you live, but we must remind you that the more time you spend with mass media, the less free you are. And you will find yourself buying things and needing things and wanting things that actually are not in your best interests. And it will be generated by that uh, hypnotic indoctrination that you're participating in. Uh, this sounds oppressive. This sounds very serious. And in actual fact, it is. Many of you lose your creative spark. You lose your passion for life because you are watching too much of this indoctrination. So this is something that we want you to take from this broadcast. We want you to take this one piece of advice. It is the most powerful thing you can do. Dedicate this year to weaning yourself off television completely and absolutely. And if you do that, you will be assisting this most beloved planet in the most powerful way that you can. And as you free yourself from that indoctrination system, as you open up to your own creativity and your own self-expression, your own health, you are going to have more and more inspirations and contact from spirit. And your life in one year will look completely different if you undertake that particular project. We will return shortly.
Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. That was so amazing. Such a, a wonderful answer. Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course we would yeah. get a wonderful well, answer from Jesus. Wow. Um interesting though, um, that he mentioned about reading your books in the order they mm-hmm. were channeled because uh, a dear friend of mine um just last week asked me um to start a book club with your mm-hmm. your books starting oh, wow. with uh, yeah yeah uh starting with making love to god and we yeah. are going to be meeting um if anybody's local to the Poconos we are starting um a spiritual book club that will be meeting at the public library Pocono Mountain Public Library the last Saturday of every month starting in March. So Saturday, March 26th, we'll be meeting in the community room. And right now there's about six of us ladies um, interested, so I know there will be six of us there. And the first book we'll be uh, discussing and reading is Making Love to God. So That's awesome. uh, we That's uh, yeah. very flattering. It's a very nice thing to hear. I also- I would actually like to put a challenge out to men in the Poconos to make this not just a group of women. Let's see some spiritual guys showing up to that to book club. That would be we amazing. Need, yeah, that would we need be the amazing. Men, yeah, we need the men on board here. You know, um, women are much more uh, seemingly much more open, but um, it, it's important to just even say those words. You know, there are there are a lot of very spiritual men out there who are studying. And uh, if for some reason they tend not to show up at, at these kinds of things, so I would just ask uh, uh, someone who's listening now is going, oh, she's talking to me. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully you'll get some guys showing up. That would be great. So, And if anybody's interested, please contact me um, via my website, awaketooonenessradio.org, um, the two, not, number two, awake two onenessradio.org because I do kind of need a head count since we're meeting at the library. Uh, right now we're meeting in the small community room, but there is a larger one. But I just need a, a head count beforehand to know which room to um, make available. Okay, that's great. Amazing. So okay. we are going to follow Jesus' advice, and we are going <laughs> to study the books in order. <laughs> yeah. um, I, actually, I will take a moment uh, just at this Uh, point in the interview Um, just to mention a couple of things Uh, we are starting what's called a year of forgiveness uh, starting um, very soon and that's a lot that's a series of live streaming events which are going to be between uh, two to four sessions a month Um, we have one free one coming up We've we've done two free ones we've got another free one coming up on February the 14th um, and I will be uh, channeling Amanda and Jesus and answering questions in real time. It's a global event, so people from all around the world are going to be there. We had people literally from around the planet at the last one, which was wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. But you but you do need to leave, if you'd like to participate in it, you do need to leave your email at channelingjesus.com uh, because we send a link out to people and that allows you to access the live streaming event. And I do just want to give you a heads up on this February 14th live streaming event. We are going to be offering deep discounts on the subscription for this year-long program. And it's the only time that we're going to do it is in this first um, uh, 24 hours following the February 14th broadcast. So if you are interested in accessing these live streaming events for a year uh, at a at a significant discount then that is the that is the uh, live stream that you'll want to go to and you'll be notified of how to take advantage of the advantages of that uh, discount uh, and I guess the other yeah so that's really great um, I have a web uh, uh, guy in England who has taken over sort of technical management of some of these things and so it's really exciting to actually be able to answer questions from around the globe. We have people from Fiji and uh, Australia, England, Germany, everywhere. And um, uh, they are, the guides, uh, Jesus in particular, is uh, saying that when we have 
a group in real time communicating with each other and focusing on these teachings that it really, really shifts the frequency of the planet significantly. So the more people that we can get uh, participating in these live streaming events, the, the better it's going to be for all of us. It's a communal effort. Um, so that's the first thing I'd like to mention. And the second thing I would like to mention is that I do do one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions um, over the internet uh, with Ananda Counseling and uh, uh, those uh, you can uh, contact me at bliss is the answer at gmail dot com if you would like to find out more about those individual Skype sessions. So that's just me uh, promoting mm -hmm. a couple of things that are going on. No, wonderful. Life. No, wonderful. Definitely. And I, I'm just noticing because I, I'll definitely be. Um, I missed the last live event because I was on vacation, but mm -hmm. I will definitely be at this upcoming live stream, and it's um, Valentine's Day. That's right. <laughs> and, so that's yes, nice. yeah. I guess when you said February 14th, I was like, oh, yes, Valentine's Day. Valentine's so, Day. Uh, a day of love. And, day of love, uh, that's on a, the day of love, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is wonderful. That is, no, no, I'm so glad you shared that with us um, because I definitely uh, want to partake myself and hopefully um, many of our listeners will be able to um, take advantage of that as well. That is amazing. Um, we still have Felix on the line. He's the, and he's, we might feel one short question from Felix. So let's uh, okay. bring him back in. Okay. 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 Hi, Hi Felix. Hi. Okay, we have how time for maybe just one short question. All right. Um, I would like to know the the Jesus position on on um, actual subjects of the society, like uh, abortion, like uh, homosexualism, like mm -hmm. same sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. But, go, but Felix. Yeah, those, yeah. those good, those good juicy subjects. All right, that's okay. a good question. Okay. Oh, All right. So, uh, okay, Felix, I'm going to put you on mute now and let Jesus come in. Okay. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sure you'll have some interesting. I'm just going to have a sip of water here. Just give me a sec. Okay. Sure. No problem. Okay. I'm going to take a couple of breaths and he will join us again. Hang on. Uh, these are, of course, the great um, questions of your uh, religions, and uh, you will notice that uh, these are not subjects that I spoke about in my ministry on the earth plane, and that is because they are not subjects that are focused on uh, spirit, they are focused on the body, and it is always my purpose to draw your attention to the non-physical. It is always my purpose to bring your frequency up out of the physical realm, not because it is cursed, not because it is evil, not because it is the devil's handiwork, but because as long as you are focused on the body, you are immersed in separated consciousness. You are immersed in the ego mind, and that is where you suffer. And so this is why these questions have been such contentious ones. And this is why these questions have caused so much friction and so much hatred and so much judgment in your society, because that is what they were designed to do. They were designed to implement antagonistic frequencies into the collective consciousness to keep you down in those lower realms. Now, this is once again one of these difficult, difficult subjects because you have, with all of your heart and mind, many of you believed that these were sins, that these were evil in some way. Any behavior arises from belief, and belief is always indoctrinated into the mind if you are not listening to your guidance system. Your guidance system is what is God-given. It is not your beliefs. Your beliefs are given to you by your society, your religions, your families, your teachers, your gurus. There are many beliefs that you can hold in the mind. 
But the only beliefs that are true are the ones that are in alignment with love, the ones that make you feel calm and peaceful, accepting of yourself and others. That is what love is. There is no evolved spiritual teacher that will tell you that to judge another is good, that, to tell, that will tell you that to hate another for practices of theirs is justified. That is what I taught, to forgive everything because it is a reflective universe. It is a collective consciousness. And when you truly grasp this, that you literally are all one, you are one mind expressing itself in millions and millions of forms. When you attack any part of that one mind, you are literally attacking yourself. And that is why forgiveness is such an important practice. And it is why non-judgment is such an important practice. So abortion is a being, a mother, who feels incapable of bringing that birth to term for a variety of reasons. And in your society, Many women choose to have abortions because you live in a very unkind society. You live in a very materialistic society and you do not look after each other very well. And there are many women who choose to terminate pregnancies because they cannot tolerate the idea of living in this unkind and materialistic society alone and without financial help. And so they choose to make this decision. And it is very painful for them. And it is the only thing they do given the world in which they reside and the mind in which they reside. And spirit never judges you for making mistakes or making decisions based on fear or limitation or lack. That is where all decisions are made in those lower realms. You are making lower frequency decisions when you hoard your money to yourself, when you have hundreds of thousands of dollars stashed away in bank accounts and you walk past people with no food holding your head high and not looking at them. That is committing the same kind of low frequency decision. So it is very important here that we level the playing field when it comes to committing sins as you believe them to be. There are many different forms of sins what is a sin? A sin is a lack of love. It is an action that is generated by thoughts that make you feel a certain way and make you act a certain way. So abortion, for example, is an action that arises from fear. It arises from limitation. If that same woman that uh, chooses the abortion was living in a society that assisted young mothers, perhaps that don't have jobs or partners to assist them in raising of children that was generous with its social welfare programs that provided housing and education and kindness to assist them on their process of evolution and uh, uh, expansion then those same beings may not choose to terminate those pregnancies they may choose to keep them and raise them in that more loving society so it is not possible to say that that person has committed a sin because in actual fact, many of them would not make that choice if they lived in a kinder and more generous environment. So who is committing the sin there? It is often those who are holding the purse strings of the social welfare systems and education and uh, uh, housing uh, systems that are in actual fact causing that uh, person to make that decision. And homosexuality, there are many, many variations of society, many variations of intelligence, many variations of uh, self-expression. And there is an endless expression of physical sexual orientation uh, that you are oblivious to. In your society, there are many, many beings who hide the truth of what they are because they are afraid of being ostracized because they are afraid of being judged. And so it looks as if there are men and women only with these few aberrations out there. But that is not so. There is a consistent uh, self-expression that happens arising from within each individual that is in alignment with their guidance system. 
And what somebody else does is none of your business. If you choose to make love to a particular kind of person or you choose to express your sexuality in a particular way, uh, that is your business. It is nobody else's business. And we want you to know that spirit does not value bodies. Bodies are of the ego's world, of the ego's mind. And we want you to know that your body is not remembered once you pass over into the higher realms. What you did with your body is not remembered when you pass over into the higher realms. And nobody in the higher realms judges you for what you did with your body, good, bad, or indifferent. Even, if though, even those of you that murder another being with your body and kill their body are not judged in the way that you believe they are. They are brought into loving, forgiving spaces. They are educated they are shown the error of their ways. They are shown how it happened. They are shown where poor decisions were made. And they are given the opportunity to re-educate themselves to be more in alignment with love. So that is what we want you to begin to do on your uh, journey. Yes, you all have your own journey and you have your own map. And we want you to begin to listen to your own map and align yourself with that map. But there is a process that you must go through before you can get clear and uncontaminated feedback from that guidance system. And it is getting your mind into a state of peace. And for many of you, you know that having a peaceful mind is very, very difficult. And so we have brought into manifestation these books through this being, and we recommend once again that you read those books in order and we also recommend that you do the lessons of A Course in Miracles as, as part of your spiritual practice. A Course in Miracles is a book that is infused with Christ consciousness, energy, and ideas. And when you align yourself with that particular text, you are being taught and guided in a profound and energetic way that is nonlinear. It goes deep into the psyche. It goes deep into the heart and mind of beings who study that material. And it cleanses very, very quickly, even though it seems like a tedious process. Relatively speaking, it is a very, very fast process. And those lessons are designed to clarify the mind, to focus your mind on forgiveness and love, and to work through the issues of your consciousness that are causing your suffering. It is designed to bring you to a state of within a year, and after that year, then you can begin to really trust and interpret correctly the feedback system that you have. But as it stands now for most of you, you are so deeply indoctrinated with untruth that this clarification process must, go, must be undergone first. And that is a difficult thing for you to hear because it is a year-long process and it is methodical and daily and that is the last thing that this indulged the overindulged ego mind wants to hear it wants what it wants now and it wants it very very fast so we want you to be slow down as you journey through this evolution process we want you to begin to slow down and be more vigilant it seems contradictory but it is not we want you to unplug unnecessary distractions and importers of low frequency ideas that means your newscasts and your television shows we want you to spend more time in nature and even the time that you free up from unplugging from these kinds of indoctrinations are going to give you hours each day in which you can explore your consciousness and in which you can begin to re-educate yourself into alignment with love. And this is what we want you to take from this broadcast. Nobody is going to do it for you. Nobody is going to intervene and rescue you from yourself. Nobody is going to rescue you from your own mind. Your own mind is creating your life. It is creating your body and it is creating your relationships and your financial situation. It is creating all of those things. So if you do not go into your mind and change it, you are going to get the same results. And if you are still being indoctrinated by mass media, you are going to get worse and worse results because you must remember what we said. They are trying to hold on to control of old systems because they feel they are losing control. 
And so these things such as uh, terrorist attacks and news coverage of these things, mass shootings, are going to be more covered, more intensely broadcast into your world to keep your frequency low. Yes, it is a conspiracy. Yes, you need to know this. The time for uh, sugarcoating this uh, reality is over. We are here to tell you that you must become the captain of your own ship once again and you must go through your mind systematically and eliminate that which is causing your suffering. That is how you know that it does not belong there because you are designed to be loving, you are designed to be happy and this place can be a most wonderful expression of individuality and self-exploration when you are aligned with truth, when you are aligned with love, and when you are listening to your clarified guidance system. That is what all these teachings are about. It is what my teaching has always been about, and it is what my teaching will always be about. There will always be ears out there who are just about ready to listen to this information, and there are going to be those of you today that hear this information and begin to make the change towards freedom, towards love, and towards forgiveness. And we want you all to make those choices because this planet cannot continue on in the state that it is. You can see that. You can see the environmental devastation. You make thousands of choices each day that are supporting systems that are not in your benefit and not in the planet's benefit and not in your civilization's or your children's benefit. So begin to pay attention to what you buy, begin to pay attention to what you read and watch, and pay attention to how it makes you feel. This is the most important thing. But as we said, you cannot rely on your guidance system impeccably 100% until you have removed some of these conditioned thoughts and ideas from your mind. And that is what these books and these teachings are for. So we are with you. We are not separate from you, but we are at a frequency of love. So if you want to connect with us, if you want to commune with us, if you want to get inspirations and dreams and ideas that are of a higher frequency, then you must step up to the plate and remove low frequency activities and thoughts from your mind and from your actions. And then we can reach you. That is all this being has done, as we have said many times. She removed herself from violence and hatred and judgment in her mind and outside of her. And uh, she then popped up like a cork floating on water into the higher realms and uh, of this earthly frequency, and we were able to connect with her. She has been through a long process of reconfiguration and uh, transformation, and we want you to know that it is available to all of you. That is all I did in my lifetime, and it is unfortunate that the truth of that experience was not uh, transmitted through your history. But now the truth is being transmitted, and we would like you all to pay attention to it. If it feels bad, you should not be doing it. If it makes you feel sick, you should not be doing it. And if it hurts another, you should not be doing it. So you must become vigilant for love. You must become vigilant for good. And you must become forgiving in your heart and your mind. And that is the only thing that is going to bring the world that you want into manifestation. Your, pol your politicians are not going to do it for you. They are part of the system. And this revolution is separate from the system. So begin to practice love in every moment that you can and forgive all of the hurts that you believe have been done to you. The past is over. You must reclaim this holy instant, this moment now. This is the only place that you can create what you want. So let all the past hurts go, let your future worries go, and hand this moment over to love, and all will begin to shift. You will begin to see miracles, your relationships begin to heal, your bodies will begin to heal, and you will begin to attract all kinds of abundance to you in the form of people, places, and things that you have not yet experienced. So understand that this is a journey into the hearts and minds of yourself first and begin that practice today. We are that one that you know as Jesus, and we thank you for your participation in this broadcast, and we look forward to encountering you again soon. 
<laughs> thank you. <But> <laughs> thank thank you so much, Tina. Thank you oh, so that was much. Oh, good Jesus, timing. It's like one minute. We left. are we are totally <laughs> down to the wire, and I I did not want to interrupt Jesus. <laughs> I, I just thank you so much, and I will say good night. But we'll talk to you soon. Love you. Okay. Thank you very bye much, Karen. Bye. 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 Bye.